At this stage in our recovery, I wanted to say a few words about the support from the United Kingdom in partnership with the Virgin Islands that's helped get us so far. The support from the United Kingdom was planned and delivered with our agencies on the ground here and came in three phases. The first phase, immediate military and humanitarian support. The second phase, more medium term support to help on our critical national infrastructure, to help get the water, the lights, the power back on and to help those most in need. And then the third phase, setting us up and helping us for the long term recovery. The first phase was about immediate support that came in a matter of hours with the first military support on, on the ground, supporting us, helping us to restore law and order. We had over 350 military personnel on the ground. We had also further personnel coming in and supporting us in air capability and were further ships that came in to support us. We also had over 50 police officers from the United Kingdom, as well as others from Bermuda and the Cayman Islands who came to help work along our excellent Virgin Islands Police Force. We also had support up at the prison to help restore the integrity of the prison, to recapture the prisoners and to put them back in there with personnel and infrastructure repairs to make sure we had confidence in the prison. The UK support also helped us in those immediate days and immediate needs in humanitarian support. Over 107 tonnes of humanitarian aid was delivered and gifted from the United Kingdom people. Everything from water to food to shelter was carried across the territory and distributed, often with the help of logistics from the military, to make sure that we were able to spread the response right across all of the islands in the Virgin Islands. I'm hugely grateful for what the UK did in that immediate time to help us restore law and order, help us in those immediate days and weeks after we were hit not just by Irma, but also by Maria. I'm pleased to be able today to just highlight some of that work. The second phase of UK support, again in partnership with the Government of the Virgin Islands, was about helping us over the medium term get our critical national infrastructure repaired and supporting the most vulnerable people. That includes everything from helping get the power, the lights, the street lights, the electricity back on. The UK funded a team of linesmen from Canada who helped restore about 20% of households and businesses to get their electricity back on. They also helped fund vital repairs to our reservoirs to get the water running and to support making sure that we have potable water. They also helped fund our sewage systems and helped get them back up and running and making sure that we were confident in, in all of our critical infrastructure. Support also went further, helping us get the roads open, helping clear and advise, but also equipment, providing trucks to the fire service, providing diggers uh, and trucks to different agencies, including public works, but also including health, everything from mosquito control through to support on public health areas. And the UK support, in partnership with the government here, has helped also deliver support to help those most in need. Those most vulnerable and those needing support from government agencies to help them repair their lives. Here we see just some of the equipment that's coming in and supporting. There's been a programme supporting over 1,000 families funded by the British Government and the British Red Cross in partnership with the BVI Red Cross to give cash payments out to the most vulnerable families affected by the storm. Also, those houses that have been most destroyed uh, for those vulnerable families have been supported. The first 100 with some of these supplies helping to get their houses repaired, help them get them ready again for the next hurricane season in support of the programme that the Ministry of Health are taking forward as part of wider, longer term repairs to help repair this territory. And United Kingdom support continued as we helped to rebuild our security. Support to the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, having restored law and order quickly after the storm, enabled then the police force to help rebuild their infrastructure, getting in new equipment, new vehicles, but also training the officers so we're quadrupling our armed response capability across the territory. And also support was provided to help individuals reskill and retrain as our economy faces some challenges after the storm. Support to the community college for vocational training courses funded by the United Kingdom in partnership with others and with the local government here.
The third phase of support for the United Kingdom was about backing the long-term plan of the Virgin Islands government to get our recovery going. The UK's position is to back the plans here, backing a vision for the recovery, backing a plan for the recovery and backing the right structure. With the Recovery and Development Agency in place, the UK government has committed to underwrite and guarantee loans of up to £300 million, over $400 million, allowing the Virgin Islands cheaper access to finance and critically the ability to go internationally to get support and to get our recovery moving at pace and moving quickly and building the long-term economy that we need here. It also, the UK has committed to giving substantial grants, over 10 million pounds, approaching 14, 13, 14 million dollars, to help us in our recovery for the long term. Help to get the right technical expertise in and to help back the plan that the Virgin Islands government has to build back stronger, smarter, greener and better. The UK has confidence in the Virgin Islands doing this, but also we should all have confidence in us doing this. Together, with the UK's support, I'm confident we are going to have a fantastic Virgin Islands for the future. Together, we'll get there.